there's a lot of good games on the Week 5 schedule, Josh. I got to tell you, there's two games I left off of my list that I didn't want to leave off, but we can only do five. So there are a ton of good games. My games are mostly narrative-driven based off ranks. So we may disagree on ranking, and I can totally hear from you, and I know there's going to be a game or two that I left off that you're going to be stunned about, but I went not necessarily based off names and storylines. I went based off what these games mean to these teams this week. So starting with number five, early in the year, this would have been top three on my list, but I have it at five because I think there's better games. Josh Allen going into Houston to take on C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans. And again, the reason why I have this a little bit lower on my list is because to me, it doesn't mean as much for Buffalo or Houston because the AFC East right now is a two-horse race. If the Jets lose to Minnesota, spoiler alert, that's coming up. Um, if the Jets lose to Minnesota, they're in trouble. They just got beat by Denver. I don't care if it's a monsoon or not. They looked awful. And obviously, we just talked about Miami situation. Houston, Jacksonville's a mess. Anthony Richardson gets hurt every time he steps out on a football field. And Tennessee's run at Mason Rudolph, a quarterback. So Houston's pretty much a lock right now to win that division unless something tragic happens. Um, still going to be a good game. But again, to me, there's not pressure on those two teams like there are other teams. Okay. Number four, the 425 window game on CBS. Packers, Rams. Let, let I agree give, with you on this one. Let me give you an interesting statistic. The Green Bay Packers, when Jordan Love plays the game this year, are 0-2. When Malik Willis plays the game this year, they're 2-0. and And the Packers, again, they're going to be scoreboard watching here, this Vikings-Jets game that's taking place in London. If the Vikings start 5-0 and and Green Bay loses this game, they go to 2-3, and you might kiss the division and potential playoff spot goodbye. And the Rams, again, they're going to try to stay afloat without Cooper Cup, without Puka Nakua. They lose any more games, though, their season's probably just going to go down the drain because they just don't have players. So this is going to be a critical game that could decide who could potentially make and miss the playoffs in the NFC wild card picture. So far, it's going to feel more like a Packers home game than a Rams home game. Boy, you're not lying there. Okay, number three. You better wake up early for this one because it's a big one. 9.30 a.m. Okay. Across the pond in London. Four no Vikings. Led by, can't believe I'm saying it, in my opinion, the MVP of the National Football League right now, Samuel Darnold for the Minnesota Vikings against the New York Jets. People want to talk about Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts not getting along. How about Aaron Rodgers and Robert Sala? Uh, that don't look great. How about the Jets scoring three field goals against the Broncos, looking completely inept offensively, and Aaron Rodgers looked all bit of his 40-year-old age. So that is a concern. As I mentioned, if Buffalo beats Houston, the Jets lose. They're in trouble. Minnesota now, we got to be careful. We all think they're for real. Brian Flores is the assistant head coach of the year so far in the National Football League for what he's done on defense. But they're still in a tough division. And they cannot get complacent and think that they're good. And, you know, maybe people are starting to pay attention to them now. And these London games are always weird. They're, you know, cross-country trips. They're... Um, Neutral site games. We saw it in Green Bay, Philadelphia, week one. A lot of weird things can happen. So just keep your eye on that game. Big game for both teams. Let me just, before you continue, let me just throw in this little caveat. Minnesota has a bye week following that game, and then they host Detroit. So is there is there a chance that even though there's a bye week in between, is there a chance that Minnesota is kind of overlooking the Jets a little bit and looking ahead to that huge game in Minnesota on October 20th against Detroit? 
I do think so, yeah. And I think there's a sense of we're 4 0. There's a bye week after this. We may not give our best effort. It is the Sam Darnold revenge game, though, against the Jets. Yeah. So we will see. Okay, number two. We're going to Thursday night football down like, in Atlanta. I like this pick. Now, this is a huge game, in my opinion, more so for Atlanta than for Tampa. Because Atlanta is a game behind Tampa. And Atlanta, I don't know what the hell that Saints game was. They didn't score an offensive touchdown. They were winning the whole game. The Saints came back. Young Way Koo makes a field goal. I technically got them at one and a half. I bet. I go to FanDuel, the line's at two and a half, and I lose by half a point. I was ready to blow a gasket because the Atlanta Falcons are the pain of my existence. But yeah, Baker Mayfield, who I told everybody, I remember telling you this, Josh, last week on the show. I said, I don't like Philly against Tampa. I said, I think we're probably going to get blown out by Tampa. I think Baker's going to have a great game. This week, I think Baker has a decent game. I don't think he's going to have a great game. I think if this game's going to come down to the final possession, we're finally going to have a good Thursday night game. And um, I think, again, I think it means more to Atlanta, the fact that they're a game behind Tampa. So, And now, the number one game. This may shock a lot of people because it's in the 1 o'clock window. Okay. I got Ravens-Bengals. I think this is a huge game for Cincinnati. If they don't win this game – and Pittsburgh beats Dallas, which was just narrowly not on my list. Because, again, I think the the weight of expectations right now on Cincinnati-Baltimore means a lot. Because the loser of this game, Baltimore loses, they're 2-3. and three. Cincinnati loses, they're 1-4. and four. And, again, if Pittsburgh beats Dallas, they're 4-1. and one. You're already three games behind. So, and this game is in Cincinnati. The Ravens' weakness, in my opinion, defensively, is their secondary. I think that is the strength of the Bengals, who still have not found a way to get Jamar Chase the ball outside of a 65-yard touchdown last week, which was an incredible play against the Panthers. He didn't really do much. Um, Can Cincinnati pick up a big win? It does look like their offense is starting to click. You've seen it the last couple weeks. But will they be able to contain Lamar Jackson because they have struggled doing so in the past. My honorable mentions, like I said, were Dallas, Pittsburgh, Arizona, San Francisco. If Arizona was 2-2, two and two, it probably would be number five, but that's one of the reasons why it's not on my list. Okay, so you're, again, your honorable mentions were Pittsburgh, Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Arizona, San Francisco, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so number five for me, this might surprise you. But I'm going to the 4 o'clock game on Fox in Denver. The Las, the 2-2 two two Las Vegas Raiders against the 2-2 two two Denver Broncos. Neither of these teams won like a great game last week. Both games were just kind of okay. Raiders beat the Browns 20-16. Broncos, as you said, beat the Jets in a very sloppy game like 10 to 9, whatever. But both teams are 2-2. Two and two. Maybe one of them could sneak in as a wild card team. Maybe. that I know that's a bit of a stretch. But it's still 2-2. Two and two. So it could be a, a big game in the AFC, all things considered, given Miami's not what we thought they were. The Jets might be falling apart. We don't know the state of Baltimore. Baltimore, Cincinnati, or Cleveland. So there is an opportunity for the Raiders to possibly, if they can figure things out, I know they just gave Devontae Adams permission to seek out a trade, but there is an opportunity for the Raiders to possibly get the ship and point in the right direction and make a run to the playoffs. How so, much do you want to bet that by the November 5th, which is also a watching day, why the NFL had trade deadline on the election day, I have no idea. But how much do you want to bet by then Devontae Adams is catching passes from Aaron Rodgers? I would not be surprised. So I'm just saying I think there, this is a sneaky good game. That's why I have it on my list. Um, number four – 
that's where I have Ravens Bengals. You're number one. Um, I'm. It's just because I'm a little bit lower on Cincinnati than you are. Um, because I still have a lot of questions about their offense. Kind of like what you mentioned about can they get Jamar Chase the ball in the right situations. Um, but I really like what I saw out of Baltimore last week. I wish they had gotten Derrick Henry that one more yard so he could have had 200 yards instead of 199. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Number three, I agree with you on this one. Packers Rams. Like I said to you, I think this is going to feel like a Packers home game. I understand why the NFL wanted to put one get teams back in L.A., but at the same time, you knew this was going to happen. But nonetheless, Rams are trying to hang on with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. As you mentioned, and I agree with you, this is bizarre. Green Bay is 2-0 and with Malik Willis, 0-2 with Jordan Love. They nearly came back and beat Minnesota last week, and partially because Minnesota just made some boneheaded plays late in that game to allow Green Bay back into it. But I had this game circled before the season. It's lost a little bit of that excitement for me um, because I was a bit higher on the Rams. But still, I think it's a very important game. Number three, that's where I have Bills Texans because... Yes, both teams are 2-1. and one. Yes, it looks like both teams are going to win their divisions pretty easily. Um, but, first of all, you have everything with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs from that press conference Josh Allen meant had, I think it was following the Jacksonville game, if I'm not mistaken. But, the, the, jo- the Stephon Diggs revenge game aside... This game could decide potentially who ends up as the number two seed in the AFC. Because I don't think Kansas City is going to just drop out of the number one seed. So I think this game could decide who ends up as the number two seed. And we know in the AFC, having home field advantage as far as you can get is a huge factor. That's why the Chiefs have been to the Super Bowl a number of times. Um. So I've got that game at number three. Number two, that's where I have Cowboy Steelers. So you had it as an honorable mention. I've got it as number two because I want to see how Pittsburgh responds following their first loss of the season. I told you that Pittsburgh-Indianapolis game was going to be a really good game. And the fact that Joe Flacco came in again and beat the Steelers, I'm just like, why did we let him leave Cleveland? Why? Even though I was, I never rooted for him last season because I can't forget, forgive and forget him as a Raven. That's just me personally. But how does Dallas respond? Like, you looked okay against the Giants. Really, you should have lost that game if New York, like you said, if New York had just put the ball into the end zone once they would have won that game. So, I want to see who bounces back. Does Pittsburgh bounce back and get their defense back and Justin Fields continues clicking on offense? Or does Dallas actually go, oh, we can play well offensively and, you know, look good doing it. And number one, I'm going to the game on Thursday night. Falcon or Buccaneers Falcons. I really like this game. Baker played fantastic against Philadelphia last week. Can he can sustain that going on a short week on the road in Atlanta, where Atlanta should have won that Sunday night game against Kansas City. They really should be three and one right now, but nonetheless, that's not how it worked out. And Atlanta won. I believe, without scoring a touchdown last week, if I'm not mistaken. We've seen a few of those games already. They they scored without an offensive touchdown. They scored on special teams and defense in a pick six. Okay. Thank you for correcting me on that. But, like, these two teams could be fighting each other for the NFC South. So, whoever wins the first head-to-head game between them 
could have a leg up. So that's my top five. My honorable mentions, I agree with you about um, Cardinals 49ers. And then Jets Vikings would be my other honorable mention. 